go right through. In fact, when all the Harry Potter books went out, were out, I would often uh, order them in advance. So I get them the first day they came out and mm-hmm. usually have them all read and, you know, the whole book read in one weekend. I just stay up late reading. So. so would we call you a bookworm? Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, that's a nice thing to know. Yeah. Sorry. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Joe, Dr. Energy Piazza. Rara is in the house. Catherine of Sarah Myers. Welcome back to BU Network Podcast, conversations worth having. On our podcast, you can expect three things. One, the BU guest moment. Two, the BU moment. And three, the BU final moment. As promised... We are giving you a very special audible on each show. Your job, well, not your job, it's to find it. You know the game, Where's Waldo? Well, here we will ask you to listen for that audible. Let's talk about our BU moment. And that would mean we talk about being real, real in the terms of where are we really? What are we really doing? What's happening around us? Instead of imagining it, let's paint the picture. So Dr. Energy, do you want to go first? Do you want to tell us where are you at the moment? I am in Ottawa in my usual um, office slash recording studio. And I've spent a lot of time reading this this weekend. Uh, my niece had convinced me to read a particular series that she had read that she absolutely loves. It's sort of um, a Lord of the Rings adaptation of a Cinderella type story. So that's I've spent a lot of time. I stayed, in fact, stayed up quite late last night reading. It's a five or six book series. So well, that's quite the story. Okay. Mm. I didn't expect that. I didn't see that coming. No, no. You know, it's it's uh, it's a fun it's a fun story, and I'm the type of person that when I start reading a book, I like to, I don't like to put it down. So I like to just go right through. In fact, when all the Harry Potter books went out, where I would, I would often uh, order them in advance, so I get them the first day they came out, and mm-hmm. usually have them all read, and you know, the whole book read in one weekend. I just stay up late reading. So, so would we call you a bookworm? Oh yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, that's a nice thing to know. Yeah. So how about you? What are you what are you up to today? Okay, well, I'm in my bridge room because I really like to be in this room when I, I think maybe I'll change rooms one night, but I don't know, or one <laughs> afternoon or one morning. But I really like this room. I have some dim lights outside, so I'm overlooking the gardens, but it's not very visible right. because of the time of evening that it is. But I'm surrounded by my indoor garden, which is always great because I like to see what's going on with my jade and my Mm. aloe and my bamboo. I was going to name them all, but I won't bore you with all of them, but I have (laughs) begonia rex and I have a really great Russian orchid. I have this Mm. for 11 years. It's fantastic. I actually got it at the place where you used to do your clear days. Oh, okay. In Sharon. Nice. I bought it there one one summer. So I'm in my bridge room, me and all my friends, and <laughs> my seven and a half pound animal dumbbell. Wait, wait, seven and a half. I thought you were going to go up to I a know, 10 pounder. No, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And the reason why I didn't do it is because I had to go and get the other plates from the Bowflex, uh, which I didn't do, but I will. It requires me getting in the elevator and then going <laughs> to get them. So that's my excuse. So I'm still with the seven and a half pound animal. But what I did do is I finished a 31-day yoga challenge over at my studio. So that was yoga, yin, and Pilates. So what happens where I am at the moment, I'm feeling really good in my bridge room. I'm feeling really good in my body and my skin because I just put 31 days into pushing myself, but yet finding new limits. So Mm. it wasn't like I pushed into a wall and said, oh, I can't do that. Right. I don't know if, you know, you have any idea about what doing, I know you do, about doing a reverse bridge. But for me, that's not Mm. my favorite position. But I was able 
to do a reverse bridge today. And I thought, okay, it was three days into the new month. Mm -hmm. So 34 days into my challenge, which is one of many, because I've been doing the challenges for a long time. I had no problem doing reverse bridge and thought that's what happens when you stick to it. Yep. So I'm feeling really good about that. It's not my favorite move, but before I would find an excuse to do anything mm. but that. And now I'm thinking, okay, I wonder how that's going to be right. next time I get that instructor and yes. we do it or a different instructor. It's, those those micro habits are huge. You know, it's, it's that it's that little bit of improvement every day that you get almost like a compound interest right builds up you know that's that story if i gave you would you rather have five million dollars now or give you a penny today and it doubles every day until the end of the month right we know the answer most people would take the five million dollars not realizing that that starting with that penny turns into 10 10 million 10.7 million dollars at the end of one month but you only really see it in the last three three to five days where it really multiplies it's the lily in the pond, right? The lily pad. You know that story, right? Yeah, tell it to me, anyways. Oh, to I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to Google it to give it to you the right way. But I will tell you that on the 28th day, yeah, <laughs> you will see more than one duplication. Right. So we can Google it so that I can be more authentic. Uh, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we can do that another time. Okay. Well, yeah, I won't do it now. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll I think I think it might be another good episode for a podcast. Let's do that. Let's do that because it's speaking about return on investment, speaking right. about duplication, speaking about what's better, the penny up front, excuse right. me, the 5 million up front or the penny a day, right. the money up front. So yes, that that's a great subject. And this all has to do with the investment that I made into applying myself, right. not letting anything get in the way because I wanted to take the physical challenge and see where it would get me. And it's amazing. I'm not stopping. I booked where I am right now is I booked the next 30 days of how I'm going to do month two of mm. my 30 day challenge, which will give me a 60 day challenge. And we know <laughs> I did this not too long ago. Yep. That turned into like a 10 month deal. So <laughs> I And I think you have another challenge that you've been doing for much longer than that about oh gratitude. Gosh. Yeah. Oh yes, a card a day yeah. since yes, that was May twenty second that I right. started that in twenty twelve. Right. So seven years. Seven and a half and, years almost now. Yes, seven and a half years ago. I really know how to stick with something. Let me tell you, <laughs> I'm loyal to my what do they call that stick to itiveness. Stick to itiveness. I am <laughs> committed. <laughs> That's I'm loyal. awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. thank you. So I am standing in I'm standing in a great space and in a great mindset right. tonight. So I'm happy to share that with with our guests and with you. Thank you for asking. Yeah, no problem. So it's awesome. I think we should carry on now and meet our guest for this episode. I think she's going to have some really interesting things to share with us about traveling, being a love junkie, and maybe even being something about, I believe it was a nerdy spiritualist. Uh, Yeah, let me tell you a little bit about her. Okay, Mm -hmm. so we're going to lead right into Giovanna. Perfect. Let's take this time to talk about our guests this evening, Dr. Energy. Absolutely. This is a dynamic woman. I'm so excited that she's on with us. I don't know if she realizes what a fan I am of hers, but she's (laughs) going to know tonight. So let me read a little bit about Giovanna. Giovanna is a self-professed nerdy spiritual girl. Oh, I like that. Right? Yeah. So I'm sure you're not the only one. I'm totally (laughs) infatuated with her. I have a girl crush on her. (laughs) A committed lifelong learner. She considers herself a modern-day medicine woman blending the science of deep healing with a dose of practical magic to cure Mm. the ailing heart. This is fun, a fun fact. Always one to shake things up. In 2018, Giovanna co-hosted the Thirsty Soul Women's Spiritual Retreat through an earthquake. Imagine that. That's got to be an experience. It's going to be tough to keep your balance on that. I want to see how she yeah. how she did that and came out of it on top as usual. An experienced and adventurous traveler, Giovanna is a student of the world, mm. a storyteller, and a lover of life. Mm. Stay tuned for her debut memoir, Lovesick, Confessions of a Love Junkie. And this will be out <laughs> in late 2020. 
I love junkie. I like that. <laughs> well, let's welcome Giovanna. Welcome, Giovanna. Giovanna. Hi. You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I've never quite heard my bio read that way back to me. That was really entertaining. I was just like, wow, she sounds cool. <laughs> well, I'd like to get we, to know her. Yeah. yeah. We certainly are enamored with you. And this is Aww. the fact. And these are your facts. And they shine. They are amazing. Can we talk about a few things here? Yeah, absolutely. I'm an open book. Okay. Awesome. Uh, no pun intended. An author. But open, open book. book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How pun intended. Apropos. Very punny. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of punny, let's talk about the nerdy spiritual girl. Yeah, Tell like me that. about that. What does it mean? Oh, yeah, that just means I'm like fascinated by, uh, I've always been fascinated by science. I've loved science in school. Um, and I really young started off on my spiritual journey and curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so um, for me, I love when I see science, you know, kind of prove spiritual mm -hmm. concepts, right? And I'm, and vice versa. And I just, I, I just consider myself very, very geeky, very nerdy. I can geek out on like, you know, quantum physics and, you know, all of the oh, science. Kindred, kindred spirit. You know, I like it. Right? Yeah. Sooner or otherwise. And then, and then I could geek out on all the woo-woo, but I especially love when, you know, the world of the woo, let's say, is like based in science. That just rocks hmm. my world. I talk about it all day long. <laughs> Wow, thank you for sharing that. And I also loved what you wrote about yourself in your bio, or someone wrote it for you, but what we just read, the modern day medicine woman mm -hmm. blending science of deep healing. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you mean by deep healing? Mm. Well, for me, deep healing happens at like the first layer of healing, which is the energy level right? And then everything manifests in the physical form, which is our densest form. So when I talk about being, you know, modern day medicine woman, I'm, I'm a homeopath by training. I'm a holistic nutritionist. I've studied and practiced energy medicine for a really long time. And so to me, it's always about the mind body connection. And so when I talk about healing on a deep level, I really talk about, you know, yes, the psyche, but, and the emotions, but also mm. even going deeper and how that energetic level is where everything begins illness but even health cool and i if i remember correctly when, when we first crossed paths it was just around the time you were starting your journey on the home with the homeopathic uh education right i think way back 15 it's got to be close to 15 met, years ago I think, no we met even way before then yeah, I was still, I still had my, uh, like, desk job. I was still working at oh, the RCMP. Okay. I, can remember. I know you were yeah. talking, I know you were talking about home homeopathy and stuff around that time. I know that it was a big, uh, and, and I loved seeing the the curiosity, like, I, I had the, the, the desire and the, and the curiosity to, to study the science along with, uh, as you say, as you call it, the woo. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, it, that sort of like, like me, you know, my mom used to always call me as a kid, Thomas. Because yeah, she would call me Doubting, Doubting Tom, Thomas, Thomas right? Yeah. <laughs> show me, like like the apostle, show me the scars, right? Yeah, prove um, it. I, want, I wanted the proof, right? So I totally, I totally get it. Yeah, so, I was, I was really early stages then. I was probably still just studying nutrition. Um, oh yes, it, I, yes. I actually always tell the story of when we first met Joe because yeah. it ties into network spinal analysis and right and because I had been I had done energy work and energy stuff way before then but somehow I couldn't like cross my, my the the chiropractic traditional chiropractic with mm -hmm. the energy piece like it still right. wasn't connecting with me and I always tell the story of when we first met because uh, because when people ask me now, I'm like, I totally am such a fan of NSA and I always talk right. about it as the best body work and stuff. And I say, and when people look at me like, really? And what's it about? And I say, no, no, it's okay. Don't worry. The first time I went, I was like, what is this guy doing? He's just, just <laughs> flicking my spine. Like nothing's going to happen here. Right. And then your whole life changes. So yeah, that's, that's my first memory of us. <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a very good lead in to so many things. I, I have this thought about, let's see, how, I was going to say, how deep does deep healing go? So you both have a really good experience with that. Maybe you can 
both add to this. So my thought is, you know, there's healing, there's deep healing, but let's talk about what is deep healing? Like, what does that mean? Our listeners are saying, what does that mean? What are they talking about? Can, Giovanna and then Dr. Energy, can, sure. can you give us some input on that? Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Yes, sure. Absolutely. Ladies yeah, that's, first. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, when I hear that statement, it's almost funny because it's like, you know, we're separating it to like deep healing and healing. And it's mm -hmm. like, I, as you were saying that, I'm like, well, there is only one healing, right? So there's like, if we, if we say there's like superficial healing and deep healing, well, then the superficial healing is not really a healing at all. It's just a Band-Aid solution. And so for me, when I talk about deep healing, I, I, I go back to causation, right? Like what caused this you know, I don't know, kink in your energy field mm. or what caused this kink in your system or your biology or, you know, your neuro neurology or you know, things like that. Like what caused this? I do a lot of relationship coaching and stuff. And I go right back to, you know, your attachment, how healthy was your attachment? Like that's where things begin that, you know, was there relational trauma? So for me, it's always origin stuff. It's going back to the origin. Mm. Um, and without getting too, like, sometimes I think in our culture, especially the therapy culture, we get really wrapped into the story, like, like oh, yeah. talk about the story and what was it and like, you know, all that stuff. And there's some value in that sometimes, but I think that's like an old model. We get stuck there too much. Um, so for me, you know, deep healing isn't separate from healing. It's just healing. Um because to me, if it's superficial, then it's, you're not really healing, right? So right. I go back to causation and and origin. That's, that's well, how I would say it. Well, thank you for that. And cool. Dr. Joe, just before we go on to you, yeah. we all have something in common. We talk about relationships. We're Italian. We must have some relationships. <laughs> <laughs> go into therapy over, right? <laughs> yes, we all have relational trauma, for sure. So the Italian. <laughs> and, here, and here we stand before you. <laughs> yes, if, if we're Italian, if we're not yelling, doesn't then we don't care. It's exactly and right. Yep. This seems like an appropriate time for. <laughs> yes. So, Dr. Joe, why don't you tell us what you think about? I was going to say relationship trauma because we're <laughs> Italian, but you just start wherever you want. <laughs> so, I, I think just to to add on to what Giovanna was saying about how we, in our culture, we tend to try to separate things out or label things and put things in little boxes. It's, you can't really separate healing, deep healing, superficial healing, as Giovanna said, it's all healing. And everybody's at a different place in their healing um, and, and depends on which, um, facet of their life that you're looking at. So is it in relationships? Is it in their financial world? Is it in a physical way, an emotional way? It, it, and they're all obviously interconnected, but everybody's in a different place in each of those different realms. So when, when I work with people, I like to look at one, what are they aware of going on in their life? Two, how much of that that they're aware of can they acknowledge? And then the third is how much of what they can acknowledge can they accept in their lives about themselves without getting too wrapped up in the story of it. Um, so what I like to look at is when I'm working people on top of that is the physical, emotional, mental, and if you're so inclined, the spiritual aspects of their life and how all of those things are intertwined and playing out in their in their life so that we look at all aspects of who you're be who you are being uh at any given moment in your life thank you thank you because we were just discussing obviously the deep healing because mm -hmm. that was the words those are the words that i was focusing on and i think it comes down to how deep is the wound mm. how far are we willing to look at that how whether it's us, you know, we can talk about clients, but let's talk about us because we can, we're human. Mm -hmm. So if we have something that we want to heal, let's get right, roll up our sleeves and let's get into this for a second. You I'm, know, already, wearing a I'm already wearing a t-shirt, so not much okay. sleeves to roll up there. Oh, let's go. you have your shirt on tonight. Well, that's a plus. You kept it because last time you took the sweater off and okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got, we get it. It's a, a G-rated show, so we're going to yes, stop yes, there. Yes. But let's let's talk about what happens when there's something that we want to heal. So we recognize that there's something. Well, if we have a good friend, they're going to make sure that we recognize. 
responsive, right? Mm. We're not going to be able right. to get that, slide that past a good friend. Good friend's going to be the mirror for us. And then we say we want to get, we want to deal with that. We want to get over it, get through it. We want to bring it, we want it to be behind us. We want to be in front of it. The terminology we use is important, but mm -hmm. we want it somewhere else. So how do we do that? How do you do that? Let's, let's give a tip to our audience on how each of us goes through something that requires deep healing. Okay. Mm. Um, I was just going to say, it depends on what stage I'm at. Because, <laughs> I mean, I have like a whole host of like, you know, I'm a two belt. Of so is it, is, it a, is it a one glass of wine or a two glass of wine kind of problem, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And, and you know, like there's, there's this, there's that like, you know, I'm so desperate. Let me get rid of this. Let me fix it. And then I have a whole like a tool belt of people for that. And then there's the, you know, like, I think I could work through this on my own kind of thing where I sit mm -hmm. with my journal and I don't know, do some shadow work or, you know, do some, you know, Demartini um, or something like that, <laughs> which is a, a method that, that I learned years and right. years ago. And, um, you know, it actually really just depends what it is and how stuck I feel. Really, it's just the level of stuckness. And it's interesting because, you know, I have a lot of friends who are coaches as well and, and mm -hmm. who are, you know, into personal development and um, in their own way, whether they're actual coaches or not. And so sometimes I just have to get a different perspective because, like, I know something's up and I know something's stuck. And I just have to get a perspective or I have to get someone to say, well, have you considered this or what about mm. this? You know, this happened actually last night with my, my friend, actually my, I told uh, in the bio, you read it about the co-leading the retreat. She mm -hmm. was one of yes. my co-leader and uh, she's in Australia. So we have to make an appointment to talk. And so we <laughs> were having a, a big chat on the phone and, you know, I was talking to her about, you know, something I'm up against right now. And she said, Oh, well, have you considered this and have you done this kind of work on, on this? And I thought, Oh, no, I didn't. And that's totally something I would have said to a client, but like I, <laughs> because I'm in it, I didn't, you know, my very first mentor used to say to me, and I quote her all the time. She said, when you're the red in the rainbow, you can't see other colors. Right. So for me, you know, it just, it, the, the answer is it depends what I'm going through and what like sort of stage of, you know, of that, of healing of that thing that I'm in. And then a lot of times I have to, you know, ask someone maybe to give me their perspective. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Thank you for that. Dr. Joe, since your sleeves are already up. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the, one of the big things and Giovanna, Giovanna just mentioned it there about be, when you're the red and the rainbow, you can't see the other colors is, you know, we all have our blind spots and if we, if we could see them, they wouldn't be blind spots. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. And so having that, like Giovanna mentioned, a good friend or a ther somebody that you work with on a regular basis, whether it's a psychotherapist, a chiropractor, or homeopath, whomever it might be, or just a good friend, having somebody to point things out for you that you might not be able to see yourself is such a huge thing. Um, and then for me, what I, what I like to do is Sometimes I'll do a little bit of discovery around what the story is, but I try not to get too wrapped up in the story. And instead, I try to just be present with whatever emotions are coming up around that issue, whatever the issue is in the moment. And working with developing, being present with it without getting... Um, wrapped up in the emotion, if, if you know what I mean. So it's not, so I allow the, allow myself to feel the emotion without letting it run my life is, is the best, is the best way I can describe how it feels, how it feels to me. And for me, you know, being a fairly athletic guy on top of everything else, I like to get out and do stuff. So whether it's go out and really push myself on the, on the hockey rink, playing when I play hockey twice a week or in the gym, lifting weights or, or doing it in a softer way, like with some yoga and allowing the energy to move through my body. I just, I, for me, I've got to get the energy in, in me moving so that I can access a higher late state of energy because, you know, we can't solve our existing problems with the same level of thinking or the same level of energy that created it. We need to access something bigger or, or that has more resourceful, resourcefulness in it. And that's, mm, well that's said. the way I go. Yeah. Right. Well, I can relate to a few, of, a few of everything that you both said, but all mm. of it, but not to say all of it. There are some things that really stuck out in my mind. So one thing, for example, is I definitely need to be physical. 
Right. So if I'm looking, I'll be specific in my answer just so that I don't give the same, you know, because we all, we all concur with one another. So let's say I'm talking to myself about something financial and I want to work on this financial situation. Right. Some people would say, well, just go to work and that will solve it. You want more money, go and do the hours. What I do if I'm working on something, let's say financial, is I will go into a physical state. So I will do a 30-day yoga, yin, pilates. I will work out longer, harder. I will spend time in another area so that I could provide myself with more space in my mind Mm -hmm. and more space in my life. Instead of getting up at five and going to sleep at one and working on clients or proposals or working with clients or looking for new clients or being frantic about it, I step away from the subject and I do something else to free up and shift the energy. So that process for me is very physical and that creates for me the movement. And of course I can sit down, I can meditate about that. Like you said, Joe, you don't sit in that moment and you don't sit there. And like you said, Giovanna, you have many tools to do things with, but I wanted to take something specific perhaps that our audience would say, yes, I'm working through a financial situation. I'm working through a love sick problem or I'm working through, because obviously we'll bring it back to your (laughs) your upcoming book. So, you know, what what about somebody who constantly goes into a situation in in a love situation where it's always the same thing and why is that happening so what i do is i get physical and when i get physical things move around and Mm -hmm. when they move around then i get to see like you said you can't if you what what does i what what does einstein say oh but the same level of can't solve the problem with the same level of thinking that created it right exactly but what what's insanity yeah insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results right yeah, so I really like that actually changing, like, you know, I guess Tony Robbins would call it changing your state, right? But right. it does make a lot of sense when you're stuck with a problem I and mean, you can continue to sit at your desk and ruminate, right? right? Or you can just change the state. Like, you right. know, sometimes I'll find myself just putting on some music and dancing. Right. That right. So it's like I have to dance it out. <laughs> So here, right. here, so here, worry about it. here's here's some here's some science for the for the the nerdy spiritual girl. There's actual research <laughs> that shows mm-hmm. if you change your position in relation to the problem you're working on physically, you actually change your perspective. So, for example, if you're sitting down contemplating a problem and you stand up, you're going to see it from a different. You're literally going to see. Yeah. Your thinking's going to change to match going from sitting to standing so you could even stand up on a chair on top of your desk and look down at your journal or your whatever and or or even just in them you know if you're not writing it or anything just stand up on on a chair and get a different perspective it'll change your thinking Mm -hmm. yeah i love it i when i lived in uh in california i had a rebounder in my uh home office right and i would um sometimes in the middle of a client call or just, just having to change up the energy, you know, I'd put myself on mute and just get on the rebounder for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's great. And, and then to, and so also to relate back to what Catherine said there about getting physical and creating more space in your head. That's also one of the things that Einstein did. He would, he was working on a math problem or a physics problem and he was having trouble solving it. He'd go for a walk. Yeah and through the streets of New York and in, and let his mind wander. And it was, you know, many, many times, you know, there's many stories of police officers stopping him and taking, having to drive him home because he realized he'd walked so far and how far he was from home and it was getting late and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, that's that's so a great cool. strategy. Yeah. <laughs> well, these are great strategies for our audience. Mm-hmm. To th- I'm sure we I could listen to this podcast over and over again, and I'm <laughs> sure I could take notes and kind of revisit how I do things and, and come up with different results. Right. It's great information. Uh, Giovanna, I'd like to go into two more things if I can. And, and one is I'd like to know if you would tell us a little bit about your travel. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I'd like to know if you can tell us a little bit, if you can slip out something about confessions, confessions of a love 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 confessions of a love junkie huh got that out i know it's a mouthful and you know it's a working title the publisher might scrap the whole title that's the funny part about all of it um okay so let's talk about your travel because i know i heard california and australia already in there and and i know you've been to mexico as well so well it's funny because i've developed quite a, a reputation for loving 
to live in other countries. And it's, mm. and it's so false in the sense that I didn't necessarily plan all that travel. <laughs> um, I kind of, I kind of rolled with the punches of stuff that was presented to me. So it's right. funny because my uh, assistant uh, a couple of weeks back said to me, I, I'm moving into a new condo at the end of the month. And, and she said, Oh, she said, are, are you, so are you staying? And I'm like, what do you mean? She said, like, are you staying in Canada? And I said, <laughs> yeah, I said, I've been here the past two years. I'm from here, but it's like, I've developed this false reputation. But the way it started off is I, um, I really just hit the wall with being a caregiver. So I had an alternative mm-hmm. medicine practice for eight years. And for the last, well, three years of my mom's life, but more intensely the last three months of her life, I did a lot of palliative care with her. And I, I didn't realize it at the time, but like a year after that, a year after she died, I just sort of hit the wall with my practice. And I just, I I started to just feel really unfulfilled. I I felt like I was telling every patient the same thing. Right. And, um, it was starting to just, I was starting to realize that the reason that I went to school to become a homeopath and to learn all of this beautiful energy medicine, I wasn't able to put it into practice or I wasn't putting it into practice. And that was, I wanted to treat the false perception because homeopathy at its core treats the false perception. And that to me was cool because if we could treat the false perception, then God, everything changes, right? But I wasn't, I wasn't able to practice that way because I was getting me like, I have asthma, I fix the asthma, I got eczema. And like, people didn't want to go deeper. They just want to fix the thing, right? right? Band-aid so solutions, I was, right? Band-aid solution. And I was just getting more and more unfulfilled. And then through a series of, you know, relationship, you know, hitting the wall and, and some other, you know, personal trauma that happened, right. I got to a stage where I said, you know what? I've never done this in my life. I, I had planned to do a yoga teacher training that got postponed. Um, and I, I, like I said, hit the wall and I said, I'm taking a sabbatical. So I, for two months left and I went to Mexico and while I was on this two month vacation, I realized that I needed to take a longer sabbatical. So I decided that I was going to take a year and leave it open to maybe a year and a half too, but a year for sure. And I had sold my condo and I had some other things happening. And I, you know, came back from this vacation and sort of uh, packed out my practice. I referred my patients out to other practitioners and I left, you know, take this year in Mexico. Mm. And uh, so that was the only planned thing, right? Like, so that's why (laughs) I had this false reputation that I just, I just love to travel and, you know, internationally move and live, you know, and and it was fun and it was great, but, um, I'm, I'm much more like rooted, like I, I want right. more roots than that. <laughs> so, um, so I created a lot of probably trauma for myself in the, in the process, but it was all good. <laughs> it's just, it's, so, trauma is just another word for fuel for growth. It, it fuels so much fuel, Joe. Oh my God. So, <laughs> so while I was living in Mexico, you know, the story goes, I met someone who lived in Australia and that's how mm. I ended up in Australia. And then that lasted for however long it lasted, just under a year. And then I got a job offer and the job offer happened to be in California. And that's how I ended up in California. So it was funny because I, I, I planned a year and I, you know, rolling with the punches and just, you know, taking the next step of where life presents itself. I ended up being away for five years Right. and Mm. it was great. Um, it was awful and great at the same time. Like there was a lot of awful experiences (laughs) and there was some great experiences. So, um, it was, it was wonderful because I had done a lot of travel, like in my early twenties, I went off and worked on a cruise ship. Um, I was Julie McCoy for two and a half years. So I've always had the travel bug and I'll never not have the travel bug. Um, it, it's just who I am, but right. you know, the international moves were, you know, got to a point I was in California for two and a half years and I, I, li- I was in meditation actually one day and I literally heard just you're done. It's time to go back. I was like, okay. So, well, that's, so, that's, yeah. that's awesome. That's kind of how I ended up moving to Ottawa. It was a similar, similar hearing, mm. hearing that inside it's time. So, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that Giovanna. I, I feel that when you talk about your travels, it seems like it, you gravitate to being in different places and different uh, situations gravitate to you and you go with it. And you've said that a few times, how you go with the flow and you're so open. And I believe that reading your book, I'm going to feel that. So can you talk to us a little bit about, about just whatever you're willing to share? Yeah. Well, give well, the whole plot away. <laughs> No, I, you know what, it's uh, the title suggests it. So the book came to be because I, in that relationship that brought me to Australia, literally hit my relationship rock bottom. It was, 
um, abusive. It was, um, you know, now I can look back and say traumatic in a lot of ways right. and just that whole experience. And it was really interesting because after that relationship ended and I was just beside myself and I, I just couldn't figure out why that one had ended and the one before that ended and I just couldn't, you know, and it's funny because I grew up always fascinated by relationships. I think I read my first Harville Hendrix book when I was like 18, which is like way not what 18 year olds should be doing. <laughs> but <laughs> I read it because my parents had such an awful marriage and I was like, I don't want that. Right. Um, and of course, you know, I almost married my father and luckily didn't go down the aisle with that, but it had happens. Right. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. years later I find myself in Australia and I hit this, rock bottom and I was recovering from that and I was I was actually on the phone with my coach and she said to me she said do you realize that you are addicted and I said what are you talking about no no what do you mean what are you talking about what to what and she said well you're you you're kind of addicted to this like illusion of romantic love mm. and I was like so at first I kind of resisted and then I was like oh my god and so I had this moment of realizing that I was addicted to the solution of romantic love. I was basically using all these men in these relationships to try to fulfill that piece mm -hmm. and to try and be okay with myself. And it was just this real kind of awareness. And she said, and, and then I said, like, I said, I'm like, I'm addicted to love. And I'm like, that's not even a thing. Well, it turns out it is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, Very much. Yeah. yeah. So it turns out it's not in the DSM yet, but you can be a love addict and, you know, you could be on any, and you know, there's a broad spectrum. Like you sure. can be Glenn Close, burn bunnies, like poor bunnies, <laughs> like that end of the spectrum. Right. And then you can be <laughs> highly functional, you know, somewhat successful woman who just can't get her relationship you know what together right and she, it was just such like everything inside me sunk because i just had to really face that the problem was with me and it was, it was several months after that that i was sitting in a cafe and I, I i had come up out of the cloud of awful grief and disappointment and i was feeling really good and actually i was already planning to come back to toronto this is before the job offer to california and i was sitting in this cafe and i thought you know I want to write a book. I'm going to write about this story. Like it's almost like a cautionary tale. Like I just feel like I need to recount, you know, how I got here and all these relationships. And, and so I started writing, I started writing, you know, chapter headings and I started writing a loose outline and, and I was like, God, he's like, what would I call this book? And then all of a sudden I pause and I hear Robert Palmer in the background going, might as well face it. Like, you're addicted, addicted to, to love. love. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> so serendipitous. So, it was amazing. So this four letter word, this good four letter <laughs> word. <laughs> good four letter word. This L word. Well, it's, what you know, it's L, and, it's L with a small, it's a small L, right? Because right? <laughs> it's not the universal divine love because yeah, yeah. we should all yes. be addicted to so that. Just, right? And just like that other four letter word, it can be a verb or it can be a noun yes. or, or, or elsewise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's, that's how it kind of came to be. And, and originally the book was called like, uh, you know, romance, romanceaholic, and mm -hmm. it's gone through just various iterations. I mean, then it went to, it was called uh, unsettled for obvious reasons, because I was unsettled. Um, and then it was called unlovable. And then it, well, the interesting part is that I went to see my homeopath uh, last year and she was updating my remedy and um, she said, do you want me to tell you a little bit about your remedy? And since she used to teach me and we were colleagues, right. she shared that one of the keynotes of this remedy is love sickness. And I said, what? <laughs> so it, was, yeah. it just all came together. And I thought that's the new title of the book. Again, a publisher may totally say we hate it sure. and that's not what it's going to be called, but well, right I now, love it. Listen, if you, could, if you could have the title of a if you could have a title of a book called "The Subtle Art of Not Giving and a You Know What," yep. then I think "Love Sick <laughs> Confessions of a Love Junkie" could work. Yeah, but see, that's marketable. That name's marketable. This one sure. might not be, so we'll see what they say. Yeah, yeah. And this leads me. Thank you so much for sharing this. Yeah, and that this was leads awesome. me to our next. Thank you so much, both of you, because the interaction that we're having tonight is just awesome. It feels so great. So let me ask you this: I would like to go into our final moment, and our final moment is where I'd like to have all of us contribute tribute to the final moment, uh, our takeaway from tonight. Giovanna, I'd like to ask you what, if you could share, you could share more than one, but one would be good. We'll just, you know, go around the room, uh, go around the city here. <laughs> what, around the province. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> can, can you share one of your takeaways from this evening's podcast? 
You know, I really appreciate the point that both of you made about, you know, changing your physical state, because as much as I know that, and it's like, even Joe, when you mentioned the science behind that, I'm like, of course I know that, right? There's so many times I just forget that because it's so easy. You know, it's like fight, flight, or freeze. And I do the freeze thing really well. (laughs) So, but it's interesting that if you just move your body, take a walk, get some air, and that does, and there's so much evidence I have in my own life of that. So I'm going to take that away as, you know, kind of a little mental note, like I need to, I need to put that back into practice more. Right. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I appreciate you that. Yeah. Joe, Dr. Energy. Hey, you want me to go, for, want me to go first? Okay. Yeah, sure, uh, please. So you just want to have the last word. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the um, so, so for me, the the real theme that I'm hearing is about go, uh, Giovanna, you mentioned it a lot, a lot, and Catherine noted it as well, was about going with the flow. And it sounds like for both your, yourself, Giovanna, and, and myself, we both had that moment where life basically spoke to us and said, it's time to move now. And, you know, we can choose to listen to it and take that advice, or we can choose to resist it, and then life gets painful. Um, so I'm getting, my, my goal is to keep getting better and better at listening and acting on those messages that life is sending me. So that's my final moment. Thank you. That's your final moment. Thank you. I and mean, let me give you my final moment. Absolutely. So here's how I'd like to discuss it. And I like to talk about, about athletes and who heals the healer. What mm. I really heard tonight was we're not alone. We don't have to be alone. When we're open and we go to the person that we need to go to, we will solve the issue, we will solve the problem, we will find the path, we will bridge to where we need to go. So not to stay with it, not to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'd like to say, this has been an awesome, awesome podcast, great relationship building. What the three of us have is awesome. I have to say that. I want to be the first to say it. Thank you, Giovanna. Thank you, Dr. Joe. Thank you. let, let's keep doing that. And um, yeah, let's, let's say, have a great night to everybody. Absolutely. Have an awesome yeah. night. Thank you both. It was wonderful. It was an honor to be asked to come on and play with you guys for a bit. Well, thank you for, thank you for agreeing to it. You know, we're, we're really excited to um, basically have you kick off this season or this series of podcasts with authors and future authors. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for joining us. Sharing is caring. Tell your friends about conversations worth having on BU Network. We really appreciate your reviews, and you can do that on Apple Podcast. Thank you. For show notes and links, go to www.b u dot network forward slash podcasts. Connect with us via our website, www.b-u.network, and build a relationship with us. Sign up to receive information, updates, and your free video training at www.b-u.network forward slash pro. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and thank you for being with us. Ciao. Ciao, babies. Ciao.